Who knows what we're going to play after that? Maybe a schooner? What's up, everyone? It's the one game, and today we are playing Azorius Midrange. Um, we are we have a Spyglass Siren Subterranean Skewer little package here with a lot of two drops, and we also have a lot of interaction. So we are going to be uh, switching up our game plan if we're going to be the aggro deck or if we're going to be the control deck in certain matchups. And we have all the tools to do that. We're even playing a Sunfall in the main deck. Uh, this deck not only went 7-0 in a standard challenge, but also played a second standard challenge and went 7-0 again. So back-to-back -back second 7-0s from someone named um, Kunakoli Goblin on Twitter. This is where I found this deck list, and I was so impressed with the back-to-back 7-0s. -back it's really hard to go 7-0. They only give you one loss, and you have to go 7-0 before you get a loss to even get seven wins in the first place. So that's really, really hard to do. So I was like, what is going on with this deck? that it got 14 wins in a row against some of the best standard decks in the format. So I wanted to play this for you guys, to play it for myself for the first time, and to really see what's going on with this deck, because it's not a very popular deck to be playing. So we have three Destroy Evil, four and Make Disappear, three Schooner, three Denik, four Siren. We have four Wedding Announcement, four Tachana's Tidebinder. Wedding Announcement's also kind of falling out of favor because there's decks that go over the top of it, but this deck's playing four of it. Um, also, Make Disappear is falling out of favor just because a lot of people are playing um, uh, Cavern of Souls. So that one um, makes, makes it appear a little bit worse. Four copies of Wandering Emperor, one Sunfall, and four Virtue of Loyalty in the main deck. We have one Iganjo, one Odawara, two and two on the basic lands. And it's playing four copies of Mirex, which um, was also surprising to me. So our sideboard has four Elspeth's Might, one Kite Cell Arsonist. Two more Sunfalls, one more Destroy Evil, three Disdainful Strokes, two Knockout Blow, and two Lorn of the Third Path. So the person that built this deck really know what they were doing and really made a really concise deck with a, um, a not a lot of one-ofs. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Let's see what all what the hype of this deck is about, and it all starts right now. CoolStuffInc.com is a proud sponsor of this channel, and you can show your support while getting 5% off your entire order and a free The One Jame Goblin Shaman token by using the code JAMES5 at checkout. Need singles for constructed or kitchen table play? Looking to pick up sealed product or the latest in magic accessories? We've got you covered. CoolStuffInc.com is the place for all your Magic the Gathering needs and support me by using the code JAMES5 at checkout. CoolStuffInc.com. Cool stuff in stock. And looks like a keep to me. Well. Definitely difficult to play mid-range decks when you don't know the game plan of each matchup, but we're going to try it here. Um, well, we're obviously going Siren here, and then who knows what who knows what we're going to play after that. Maybe a Schooner? I'm leaning towards Schooner. Ooh. Ooh, we don't have removal. Ooh, we're on the draw, so we can't tie binder either. This is the the one two punch that is definitely really, really strong. Gunner's also blue, so they can just call blue. Guys, we might already be dead. I could just go Scooter turn three, Wedding Announcement turn four, but I kind of want to Tide or Tidebinder turn three. I mean, so if I'm going to Tidebinder turn three, what should I do on turn two? Hold up, Make Disappear. Just so like, sure they can hit me for four for four poison, but they can't do anything else that turn because I'm going to Make Disappear them, and then I'll, I'll Tidebinder the next the turn after that, I guess. I'm blocking if they don't use scroll first. Oh, wow. Gave me a freebie, didn't they? I will gladly take zero poison instead of taking one poison. Oh, they did nothing. Holy moly. I am a little bit surprised. I'm just going to pass again.
Because they could have bring the ending. If they use Scrub, I'll definitely be tied by during that. They just hit me for two. I think I'm okay with that. If they bring the ending me, then that sucks, but we gotta do it. I like that. If they they serum snare me before they got to proliferate, which is amazing. <clears throat> I guess we're in like a I guess we're in like a sunfall waiting room. So what we can do here is we can schooner plus virtue. I definitely want to play two spells here. We can Schooner plus Virtue or Make Disappear. But Make Disappear is probably going to do, is probably gonna do nothing. <clears throat> we can do Denic plus... Actually, I like Denic plus Virtue better. Because it, it it's just two blockers. And I like two blockers. Genreal, how's it going? And I can't use Seed Core yet to pump the Jawbone Duelist. What's up, Moth? Good to see ya. That is a Skrelv on the Jawbone Duelist. Which means they probably have... <clears throat> Fading Hope slash Bring the Ending slash some, some Instant in Hand. So they don't, they don't care about this mana. Which is... Hopefully they just call Blue. Yes. Um, we're, we're probably going to get our 2-2 Fading Hope or something, but... Or Bring the Ending, or Serum Snare, which is going to really, really suck. Because when they do that, they're going to proliferate up, up to 3 to use the Seed Core. They have a March on both of our creatures, so we go up to 6 Poison. That really sucks. Another virtue. I kind of want to use this freaking map. I also want to use the map on the Denic, right? So I can block the Jabba Duelist. But the thing is, they have the Skrell. So, like, what do we freaking do? Get the Tidebinder again? Land? Bravel does nothing here. Like, they're gonna name White with Skrell, but they know I have Tidebinder, so what do they do? I don't really care if they... If they like, kill my 2-2 here, I don't think. I kind of care, but, like... Not really. As, I mean, as long as they don't have a, a, an interactive spell in hand, we should be okay with this Tidebinder here. This combat step's gonna be telling of what they actually want to... Of, of, what, of, what, of what that card in their hand is. Perfect. So now, since they don't have anything like that, we can cast our Virtue and hope to draw an untapped land. Nice. I don't think I'm casting Virtue here. Because they have the 1-1 the one, one double strike back to block. So I think I'm just going Schooner plus Tidebinder.
We can actually Tide Binder the Seed Core activation. If they use that on the Drop Button Duelist. Is that better than using it on Skrell? Probably not. Because now they can't. They, they we have a white creature and a blue creature in Schooner, so they can't use Scrub on Drop Bone Duelist anymore. I guess they would just call blue with it and then make me block with my Vigilance creature. What I really want to do is draw back to back lands. Well, eh, not really. I want to get down my virtue somehow, but I don't know how. Maybe maybe last turn was the only turn we could get we could have got it down. If three attackers. If we use the schooner, if we use the schooner on the two two, and then go to blocks, they just Grelf call blue, and then we tide binder. And then they counter the Tidebinder? That would suck. I guess they could have drawn another copy of March of Swirling Mist. I'm just going to blocks. We can even we can even Tidebinder the Seed Core. If I Ganjo in hand, a Ganjo would be a thing. That's a Serum Snare. Hey, we could make disappear it, make them pay four, but. That means the... No, I think I'll just let it go to my hand. Now they get to seed core the 1-1 one -one to kill my 2-2. Two -two. But we can, we can Tidebinder that. Is that even good? I feel like I need to do this. If they have a counter, they, they can't counterspell it now. <clears throat> but oh, but then they they put us to nine here with that. Yeah, this this matchup is freaking hard. Oh, we drew another Tide Bounder. That's really sticky. We can go Schooner on 2-2, two, two, cast Virtue of Loyalty. Then we're dead to just them attacking with three things. Yeah, I think I still have to chill. The cool thing about drawing Tidebinder is they don't know I have another Tidebinder. That's the really cool thing. But the only problem is that card in their hand is might be good. And as soon as they draw a proliferate spell, we're de we're just dead. I feel like there was like a turn where I might have made a misplay. Not sure. 
Attacking with all three, huh? And I guess I should just schooner the vigilance creature and block with three things. Just so I don't get like freaking seed cord. I do like that there's a lot of relevant decisions, that's for sure. Now I have two blockers against one Mirex. I'd love a land. Ralph. We should make disappear this so that they can't use Mirex. They might just let Skrulv get countered. Or just pay for it. I'm okay with either way. Make disappear stopping a 1-1 uh, a one -one either way. Worst draw on the deck. And now I think we cast Virtue of Loyalty. And then hope they don't top deck proliferate, which they probably will. Oh, land. Let's freaking go. And they did flood out, but. Wow. Tidebinder definitely was the MVP of this. Destroy Evil was. Freaking really bad. I mean, I have to block this because they have freaking seed core. It was a really good attack, too. Now I can't kill them. Gives them another turn. There's the sunfall. Okay, I have to, I have to hide binder the Mirax. Or, or just play a wedding announcement. If they draw a proliferate spell off the top, I'm going to be really sad. Just draw like a rock priest or something. Draw draw one one. Draw a job on duelist. Draw a bounce draw a bounce draw a fading hope. And also don't rope me. You can also draw like Skrell's Hive. Skrell. So many draws that you can draw that are not a proliferate spell. 
Yes, it's a scroll five. Sick. So they're gonna go for the attack plus Mirex to gain life, and then we're gonna destroy evil the scroll five. I said it's the worst card in the deck, but it, but uh, actually it didn't matter either way because we have six damage here, and they're gonna go to six. The double seed core doesn't work. Because it becomes a 3-2, and then this sees that it's a 3-2 and doesn't actually pump it. What a game. Alright, we want Kite Sail Larsonists, Sunfall... Do we want Sunfall in this matchup? It's, like, so expensive. I mean, probably. Third path. Destroy evils, like... Like, it kills the 1-4. And it also kills... Kills the 1-4 might thing. And it also kills the, um what we just killed. Does that mean that Destroy Evil gets better post-board than it is in the main deck? Um, I think Make Disappear is probably bad. And I'm going to say Denik is bad. On the draw, Schooner seems also bad. No, I think Schooner's fine. I guess Spyglass Siren. No, Siren's okay. I guess I guess Denik blocks Jawbone Duelist. The thing is, they might even cut Jawbone Duelist post-board. Post Never mind, they're on the play, so they're going to keep all the Skrulls and Jawbone Duelists in. I guess we just like cut one destroy evil. No, they're because they're, they're gonna bring in the fourth copy of uh Skrull's Hive. So I think destroy evil and LSS might are all good. I guess we'll cut a schooner. The thing the thing I like about Schooner though is that it it turns your white creatures into also blue creatures, so it plays around Skrull. But Schooner is a little slow because you're probably not ever attacking with it, so. We're going to keep one schooner in and then go with this. Hey, what a hand. Mulligan. Hands much better. I think we're putting back... A wedding announcement? Gosh, Tide Binder against Skrull was so good there. Sea Chrome Coast, nice. They didn't play the two mana card. Grawl Sive. Makes Destroy Evil really bad. There's the Rot Priest. Can't stop that right now. Ooh. You've got to have a Proliferator, right? I mean, I'm going to go for it. We, we can't just not go for it. Please work. No, oh, we have a fading hope or something. Yep. Or a phase out spell. Aspirants ascent to give flying. Woo! That was crazy. Am I at four poison already because of that? 
Jesus. That was unironically broken. Plus one, plus three, and toxic one, and flying? What a card. What a draft card. Uh, that's a Skrelv on that. I guess let's do that and get that countered. Did not get countered. All things considered. They tie binder my tie binder? No, they don't play tie binder. Oh, it just worked. Sure. There's the job on duelist. Okay, we have Elspeth Smite for that if we can. We still can't use Destroy Evil. They had the Fading Hope. Wow, they're gonna Fading Hope our tie binder back to our hand? Please. Uh. Okay. Maybe we can get the job on duelist to block, but. You know, no shot. No shot it's blocking. <clears throat> so we can tie binder plus Elspeth Smite. I mean we can even we can even animate the Restless Anchorage, but that seems bad. They know I'm going to tie binder here. So we'll work off the information they know, but they don't know we have else best might in hand. Okay, now we have no answer to the Skrelf plus Rock Priest. So, we might just lose to that. So, they had Aspirin's Descent and Bring the Ending and Fading Hope. Wait, they don't have they don't have an untapped line in hand because they because they would have been able to use Murex and pay 2 for that. That's not an untapped land. Ooh. Wandering Emperor. Right now might be our only chance to land it. And get rid of this Rock Priest. They have Fading Hope, I swear to God. Finally, I'm home. The Serum Snare, it's basically the same thing, if not worse. They're at nine. Are we making a one one or are we drawing a card? We should make a one one because if they draw a bounce spell for our, like, if there's like a single fading hope, we lose to the scrub attacking. Smike doesn't look that hot here. I mean, Smike got rid of the Jawbone to us. They draw a targeting spell, we die. That's double Rock Priest? Okay. Sunfall, please, right now. Sunfall. Sunfall one time? Crap. We can't make a blue blocker either. Scroll target rock priest call blue or call white. We have to draw a card. And hope to draw another wandering emperor. Destroy evil looking real bad here.
Block with land, the land's white. So we have to draw Wandering Emperor, right? Or Odawara? Or Tidebinder? We've got the edge in this fight. Maybe I should have made it 2-2. Two -two. I think that was a mistake. Just because I have to attack with the 1-1. One -one. Alright. Let's pass so that they we give them a chance to mess up. Even though they're not going to. Just top deck march, why don't you? You didn't even need that. Okay. Destroy Evil did seem really bad there. Um, they are going more towards the spells route than going towards the the remove my creatures route. So I honestly think make disappear is better than destroy evil. But we also have to stop the Skrulls hive. Schooner is better on the play. Wedding announcement is a little clunky. Had a couple wedding announcements and a couple destroy evils for another schooner and three make disappears. How's it going, Rachel? Wedding announcement is pretty clunky. The thing is, I don't want to be super soft to to uh, Skrull's Hive either. Like, if we cut this Destroy Evil, then we're like super soft to Skrull's Hive. I guess I'll cut it, one of the Wandering Emperors. Actually, Lorne can deal with this. Can deal with them, right? So we can go four Sirens and a Schooner and a Make disappear, and then just use Lorne of the Third Path to kill the the stuff. I guess I have to, guess I have to keep this. Alright, now we need to draw a land. Turn one rot priest, that's not very good for the home team. Okay, the goal here is to make them use Serum Snare before we have a poison counter. And we have to top deck a land. They used the march. Oh, wow. Oh, that's really bad for us. No land, Andrew. Uh, we have to make this appear this. Spell Pierce? Another march. I think it's another march. Like, why would they use that march so, um, like, if they only had one march, you'd think they would hold it, right? Um, I think we just, I think we just have to try to draw a land here. Targeting this because I like my vigilance creature. <clears throat> 
perfect. Although, Murex is definitely not the ideal land. Because we can't use Elf's Best Might anymore. A scroll Hive. <clears throat> Excuse me. There's a four drop. <clears throat> Are we smiting this? No. Hey, how's it going, Brea? They play four spell pierce? I don't think they play four, four spell pierce. They're just passing turn. This is scary. This this really makes me think like they have like they have march in hand. We're just gonna get cooked by a march, aren't we? There's a larcenist. Not bad. What we can do though is we can like hide binder a rock priest trigger. Ugh. That doesn't feel good. Like if we larcenous, they're just gonna They're just gonna phase their board out. So we have to pass. I really wish we drew a land there. Like, we kept the two lander, but... We do have to be careful about our Elspeth Smites, because Elspeth Smite could get got by the freaking flying thing that they have. The plus one, plus three. Annex Sentry. That's the reason why I want to destroy evil. But I did take them out. All right, tie binder on this makes it lose toxic, but it does block schooner. Uh, I guess we can use this opportunity to kite sail arsonist the rock priest. How about kite sail arsonist the rock priest and and one of my creatures, so we can use it. As a as a treasure token. And then we can like Elspeth Smite their Annex Sentry. But they also they also get a treasure. But like they could use the march here, but they'd have to sack the rock priest to use the march, so I'm okay with that. And now they could lose to their own scroll side and we're only at two poison. We have another rock priest. Uh oh. Do they also have a fading hope? Uh oh. I don't think we can block with the Larcenus because they play the, the flying card. No, it's plus one, plus three in flying. And we don't have Corrupted yet. 
So we can block with the Larsonist. Oh, you know what I think they're going to do? They're, they're going to, like, end step bounce the Larsonist or, like, in attack step block the Larsonist. Or, or I mean, I mean, not block it. Uh, Fading Hope it. And then get the double, get the other Rock Priest back and then try to kill me with a big march. But Tidebinder could be good here. Blocking with the Rock Priest. So they're almost dead. They're going to Fading Hope my Larsenus now. I, I really think that's the, pl the play I said already, is the play that they're thinking about doing. The problem is, is this attack is putting on too much pressure to where they have to block with the Rock Priest. And then Hive deals the last damage if they don't have... Um, they might actually have to march right now. And in that case, we might lose. They had more than one march. March is targeting... Oh! March, march is targeting both my Larsenist and my Tidebinder to get their Rock Priest back and potentially march me again. So I think we should smite the Rot Priest. No wait, aren't they dead to Skrelsive? Oh, they were planning on killing me in their upkeep. Somehow. Ulamog 21. Wonder what they're playing. Alright, so we have to be the aggro deck here, so we're definitely playing winning announcement. Ooh. I don't think we need to destroy evil this yet, right? Hopefully wait till I have four mana to do that, to do uh, a double spell here. Yeah, it looks like a Leyline Binding. We can, we can tie binder that though. I think we should probably just attack with both. Instead of making the 1-1, one, one, we should try to draw a card to draw a land. Oh, I guess that's just herd migration. We didn't draw the land. Did I time under this? We have a second tide binder. But what if, what if they just like cast a ramp spell? Dumb. I mean, they, they can't sunfall us, which is the reason why I'm doing it. Sure. I mean, they play less depopulates than sunfall, so what am I, what am I gonna do? Minus three life, minus a la minus an untapped land drop. They don't have blue mana yet, so good sign. They don't have blue mana yet. They don't have a ramp spell.
They can play Sunfall or Angel here. Guess they could have Wandering Emperor. Uh, sure, I guess. I hope you're ready to lose. I don't even think I care about that. Like it's gonna save them like five like five damage or something. Strike fast and strike hard. They don't have the angel. I feel like I should just cast my wandering emperor here. They don't have blue mana yet. I'm gonna plus wandering emperor because if I minus it and they have a freaking Sunfall, I'm going to lose my mind. I have got new moves to teach you. I'm going to go after the Wandering Emperor here. Wait. Seven damage is seven damage, though. Nah, they have four cards in hand. No shot. No shot I'm actually getting a two-turn clock through. Play a Ganjo? Do they always play a Ganjo in that deck? Maybe I should have minus Emperor just because I have another one. But I could have to Tidebinder this turn if they go like Blue Source Atraxa. We are going to get destroyed by a freaking herd migration if they have it. We must protect the people. What do they have? Yep, here it is. Yikes. Okay. I guess we can Virtue of Loyalty and get bigger than the 3-3s. Three I don't want to cast this Wandering Emperor, so I'm going to cast this. Problem here is we're also not drawing lands. Let your blade do the talking. Somehow we greet our enemies. Wait, they might be dead with this attack. I know I don't need to hold up Tidebinder anymore because they just use two of their mana. Back to wandering. Yes. That was nice. Alright, cut the Sunfall. I feel like this deck is like built to beat this deck. This deck. I guess Denik is worse because they have a bunch of exile removal. And also they're going to bring in the card that says exile all stuff with the mana value two or less. 
What we really want is the same full stroke. We want Lorna the Third Path, the Story Evil. So what are we taking out? <sighs> we are the aggro. We're the tempo deck, so I, I think Denik goes out, even though we kind of want a two drop. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven two drops. Probably not enough. The wedding announcement just coming out. We keep a couple Denix just because I want a two drop on two. What again up it does seem kinda slow. Although it was kinda good in that game. Maybe I cut like one wandering emperor for like one wedding announcement, but I still don't really think that's good based on how many sweepers they're gonna bring in here. So I'm just gonna We're gonna cut a wandering emperor for a Denic. To just have all the two drops. Yep. Because going one drop, two drop is like really important to winning. In general, but also this matchup. Wow. I guess I'm keeping, but I don't like the lack of white mana here. There's white mana. Alright, next turn is the... Next turn is a 4-4 that ramps them. I guess it's just Denik. Or, or they can just uh, cast the 3-mana card that exiles these two. That's fine. I'd rather them exile these than exile tokens. Oh, whoa. Are they just going to cycle? Am I committing more to the board? Look at that. What are they going to do on turn four? Guess I'm going to hit them for three and play a Splyglass Siren, then play a land and hold up the Stample Stroke. The next turn we go like Mirex, Mirex, hold up Emperor. Ah, oh, that's what it is. Wait, why not just herd migration on their turn, and then play the land that they herd migration for? I guess they wanted to. It conceals information, right? Now I know they have a cavern. Now I know they have another an extra land drop. That matters a little bit. I guess they wanted to make it seem like they had something. From Sea Truck. Ooh, that's a problem. Ooh, not anymore. Fortunately, this probably has to be a Wandering Emperor turn because I want a Tidebinder plus Trope next turn. Oh. Can't even attack through this thing. We can gain two life. Fortunately, this might be like a couple of a couple of line bindings. Pretty sure we have to wandering up our end of turn here. And if they cast a couple spells, then whatever, you got me, but... Finally, I'm home.
Yep. Weird. If we were on the play this game, we would have been done exactly what we wanted to do. Pie binder this plus stroke this. We need to draw to destroy evil. It's four in the deck. This is an easy block, so we can minus and exile the 6-6 six, six here next turn. Wow. It's a good use of our turn. Is what you get for hurting my people. Nice. I'm gonna. I I didn't play these creatures out because if we get Sunfall, I want to go Genic, Spike, Last Tower, and hold up, make disappear. Ooh, they just went for it. We could have had a Tide Binder here, but they do just have to go for it. Okay, so now we might lose. Although Mate Spear is not really good when they have Cavernous Souls in play already. Maybe we should have just done nothing there. Yeah, we're dead. No destroy evil. Couldn't stop the Atraxa. Time to win on the play. We did get the nice Nissa turn off, but... Oh, man. I mean, I think we have to keep this as one of our most aggressive starts and has a lot of card advantage. And it has triple Seacrum Co, so we're not going to draw tap lands the rest of the game. For the most part. And it has another, another creature here in Mirex. I don't love it, but... Ooh, that's not a white land. That means they're not... They have Barrage on my Siren? That actually kind of hurts. Can I draw a creature? Not good at this game. 
That was pun. That was really, really good. Oh my god, we're just gonna draw lands all game. Oh my god, no way. Not like this, guys. Not like this. No. Well, Emperor, something. Okay. Oh, man. We could have used that Tide Binder to stop the lockdown, but sure. Wow. That was a lot of freaking lands. Right, more spells. Can't be terrible. Like, maybe we should have stopped the invasion, but I don't think from host sea truck is a good thing for me to just leave around. Also, they did just turn back on their sea shark. Alright, I need them to not have the nuts. And they seem to have had the nuts. For evil? I am concealing my second copy of Mirror because I don't need it yet. Alright, now we have to hope they have, they have literally nothing. Time to get a Traxud? Or that, that card's pretty good. How about a land, guys? Okay, they cycled. It's a good sign. Cycle again. How do we beat these? How do we beat this Nissa without Tide Binder? We're just gonna die to Nissa minusing and killing us with for like infinite damage. Uh, that card's not good right now. We have to attack. We have to attack the Nissa. So it doesn't freaking kill us. Oh no. They have like Gondro. We're doomed. The Seiju. Yeah, we're dead. Yeah. Yeah. 
What's map targeting? This. We've just drawn too many lands this game. We need an answer to Nyssa. Virtue doesn't help. This might get block anyway. They they did they did they did have like a a pretty bad hand. You know everyone hates domain, but I'm playing an RCQ this Sunday and the new cards will be legal. I'm thinking about four helix in my domain list. Am I crazy? No, I don't think you are. I think that shores up your mono red matchup, and it's marginally better against uh, the other deck. Okay, how many forests do they have? One, two, three, four, five forests. So that's five, ten plus seven. Ten plus seventeen is twenty-seven. We actually live here. If they attack with both, we might actually be able to win the game. Maybe. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight plus five is thirteen. They're attacking for twenty-seven. We need to block with eight toughness. We can actually triple block the thirteen thirteen. But then we lose all three of these creatures. Black with eight toughness, we take 19 and go to one. And then if we draw if we draw a map and hit a non-land, we win the game. Oh, oh, oh. Alright, we've drawn so many lands. Non-land. Non-land. Non-land! No! Crap! Okay, so, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 11, 12. Do we have to kill the Nyssa? No, because then, uh... Sure. Okay, so are we making mites now or not? Probably not. If they draw any if they draw any way to interact with these two creatures, we lose. Yes! Yes! Alright guys, thank you very much for hanging out. What a crazy couple games of uh, matches. Oh my god. Those were both down to the wire and our decisions mattered so much.
Oh my god. Anyway, uh, this deck felt really good. I mean, I, I say that because we won both matches we played, but like, uh, uh what, what else is there to say? I mean, the person went 14 and 0. They're probably a really good player. And uh, I'm probably less of a good player, and we went 2 and 0. So, hey, undefeated and undefeated is basically the same thing. Anyway, check out the deck list down in the description below if you did like it. Like the video, it does help this reach more people. Use code James5 at checkout at coolstuffinks.com to get 5% off of your entire order and get a one James Goblin Shaman token. I'll see you in the next video. And as always, peace.